Today's episode of Inside Gaming is brought to you by Postmates. You can get $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you use the code INSIDE. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Tuesday. It's Treason Tuesday! Facing Ooh. Nintendo betraying us and selling out to China just like every other company basically anywhere else. <sighs> China hasn't historically been the friendliest country of video game consoles or basic human rights, but Nintendo is hoping to change that, the console part that'll make them a lot of cha-ching. Not the human rights stuff, which is boring and not related to money. But yeah, now that this video is officially banned in China, let's Let's get into the sweet, sweet news, Brian. <laughs> Shout out to Taiwan and my Uyghurs. Hey! Drop the mic to bat. Yeah, today is a big day for Nintendo as the Switch officially went on sale in China today. Oh, so they're late. the latest console maker to try to break into the notoriously tough market over there. But there are signs that things could actually be different for Nintendo. They're like a kid who brought their own steel bat to hit the pinata at a party. That kid can't lose. You used whatever broomstick they provided you. You didn't bring your own weapon of destruction. Rookie mistake. A bat with nails in it. We'll break down the reasons why Nintendo may be the first console maker to crack that Chinese <laughs> nut. <clears throat> but let's do the actual news first. The Switch went on sale this morning, and it looks like there's some demand for it. More than 105,000 people have made a reservation to buy one on the Chinese site JD.com, and another site, Finquile, said it was seeing a strong demand. A Finquile spokesperson told CNBC that Switch has been one of the most popular console products over the past few years. Yeah, meanwhile, Nintendo shareholders seem to be happy with the response. Right, Brian? Yeah, the last time I checked, its stock price was up more than 2.5% today. That was its highest level in 19 months. So yeah, I, obviously people who own Nintendo stock are happy that it's trying to tap into that new market. And some analysts say that the Switch, which has already been a bestseller in the rest of the world, could become the biggest console in China. Ooh, yeah, but there's a big <laughs> catch to talk about. I'm just excited about the Chinese market. I'm excited about untapped market potential. <laughs> exactly. I just see all those, my corporate mind goes to work. I wonder if every Uyghur in a re-education camp is gonna get their own Switch. Yeah, but they only have one game they can play and it's clap for Xi Jinping. But there's a big catch to talk about because other companies have tried and failed to crack the Chinese market. Yeah, that Chinese nut's a tough one. China and the video games have had a pretty stormy relationship, to say the least. For one thing, the government banned consoles in China for 14 years, starting in 2000 what? and ending in 2014. They missed a lot of good sh They didn't get Klonoa? No, they got Klonoa. Okay. At the time, they said they were concerned about the effect of violent video games on young people. Hey, their politicians are just like ours. Aw, we're not so different. As a result, Chinese gamers played on PC and later free-to-play mobile games. And uh, this year, consoles are only expected to make up a whopping 1.3% of total games revenue in China. Yeah, they hmm. definitely, the PC has the market cornered over there. They're big into PC, really big into free-to-play mobile because they don't want the mobile games pirated. So they figure, well, we'll give them away for free and then you gotta pay for the microtransactions. You can't pirate microtransactions. And a lot of them are like fully pay to win, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah shouts out to the Chinese version of Call of Duty. But uh, console makers, including Nintendo, still have tried to get into the market. In 2003, despite China's ban on consoles, Nintendo partnered with Chinese officials to make the IQ player, which was basically a miniature N64 that was designed to combat piracy. What? But Nintendo is set to come in big this time with the Switch. And as part of that, it's partnering with Chinese mega corporation Tencent. <gasps> Yay! To release a Chinese specific switch. And of course, to deal with the government bureaucracy. It's just a switch, it's just got just two red Joy-Cons, that's it. Yeah, it's a switch, but you can only play government approved. Actually, that's just what it is. That's not yeah. a joke. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it is, yeah. yeah. If it hears you say Winnie the Pooh, it bricks immediately. <laughs> it starts on fire and sends an execution van to your home. The ultimate form of protest is, is sitting in the middle of a public square in China with one red Joy-Con and one yellow Joy-Con <laughs> clicked in. A switch is selling for the US equipment equivalent of just under 300 bucks in China. That's actually cheaper than the PS4 and the Xbox One X when they released there. Interestingly, the Switch only has one game currently in China, New Super Mario Bros U Deluxe. Yeah, infamous for propagating the Chinese machine. Why would you buy a $300 console for one game? People bought it for Breath of the Wild. Yeah, there you go, Brian. Wait, I thought they couldn't play it. Well, read on, my friend. Hope they really like platformers over there. Everyone loves platformers, yeah. right? But more on the way. Reportedly, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Odyssey are also releasing in the coming weeks. And then next year, we'll see other Nintendo IP like Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Party, Mario Tennis Aces, and more. So basically, it's a Mario console. Yeah, something that Nintendo has some built-in advantages versus Sony and Microsoft, which are also trying to sell their consoles in China. Yeah, we'll get to those advantages in a second. Before we do, you know who's not trying to sell a console in China? Postmates, because they don't sell consoles, you idiot. 
idiot. Yeah, fuck. Flip this laptop around to tell you about Postmates. Yeah, if you need red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., and ibuprofen at 10 a.m., Postmate it. Yeah, Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service you need. Like seriously, you can get like soap and stuff on there. Uh, anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the U.S. and offer delivery from all the restaurants, grocery and convenience stores, and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Postmates will bring you what you need within the hour. And that's a guarantee. Yeah, you can even track it on the app. Yeah, no more trips to the store. You don't even know where the store is. That's no problem. Postmates will deliver it to you anyways. Download the app for free for iOS and Android and browse local restaurants and businesses. You can even track your delivery in real time. Again, you're gonna wanna do that. You're gonna know where your driver is. Uh, here's the cool part. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our watchers, viewers is probably a better word there. This is watchers. Uh, $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. So if you don't have Postmates yet, dog, I'm giving you $100 of free delivery credit. Like. Go, do it. To start your free deliveries, just download the app and use the code INSIDE. You know, like Inside Gaming. Yeah, so there you go, no excuse now. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmates, Postmate it. Download Postmates and save the code INSIDE. All right, boys, back to the China stuff. Uh, oh, I'm so glad oh. you could hand deliver that ad to us in studio. <laughs> Getting back to Nintendo's console advantage, analyst Sirkin Toto told CNBC that Nintendo Nintendo! Nintendo! Told CNBC that Nintendo, Nintendo has a fighting chance in China because it has exclusives that you can't get on PC or other consoles. Did Toto hear that from Dorothy or Auntie M? I'm just not. Uh... Oh! Oh! Wizard of Oz joke, 1930s move. Yeah, Nintendo's roster of IP like Mario, Pokemon, and Zelda is popular worldwide, including in China. So they're probably hoping that Mario will move some consoles. So Nintendo is also known as being kid friendly, which could also be a big help in China. Yeah, the research firm Nico Partners wrote that the family friendly nature of Nintendo's first party titles will lead to both faster approval times and a higher quantity of approvals in China when compared to Sony and Microsoft first party titles, many of which have been unable to obtain approval as they contain excessive violence or other content that is restricted in China. Can you imagine if they let those games through, the, the coups that would happen? Getting past government censors is a big deal in China, especially after they held up all game approvals for several months this year. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot was giving Hong Kong a shout out. They just couldn't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> now that's twin sanity. Yeah, meanwhile, the Switch is obviously portable, which could appeal to Chinese gamers who are used to mobile, right, Brian? Yeah, uh, China, as we said, they aren't really into consoles, but it is still one of the biggest markets in gaming overall. It was estimated at a total of $36.5 billion this year, just slightly behind the US market. That is more money than I have. There's a reason for that though. Researcher Nuzu blamed the Chinese government's nine month licensing freeze on new games. And the government has been trying to reduce screen time among kids. Boo. Yeah, USA. noble list of causes. You're not my dad, China. They're like, actually we are. Yeah. Analysts though expect China to retake the top spot in 2020. So for video game makers, China's still a huge potential market. Yeah, and we've seen this past year that companies will do a lot to tap into that massive market, even completely abandon their principles to avoid pissing China off. Hey, remember when we changed the remake of Red Dawn to have China not be the enemy? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, most famously, Blizzard even punished a pro Hearthstone player for making statements supporting protesters in Hong Kong after a tournament. We've never talked about that on this channel, not once. <laughs> no. That sparked a huge backlash from fans, one that Blizzard is still dealing with, although everyone seemed to kind of forget about it once they announced Diablo 4. But they also partnered with Chinese companies on a variety of projects, like the upcoming mobile Diablo Immortal game. Do you have a phone? No. Interestingly though, there doesn't seem to be any outcry in the West about Nintendo doing business with China, but then again, Sony and Microsoft are doing the exact same thing. Yeah, human rights are great and all, but we've got to make as much money as humanly possible. That's the ultimate human right, is to just bathe in gold. Yeah, it's my right to make as much goddamn money as I want. Yeah, Nintendo gets a pass, I think, because people think it's all cute and cuddly, but they do stuff like paywall content behind Amiibos. They've gone to heavy microtransactions in their mobile games, so they're, they can be just as shady as the rest of them. Well, they're just video games Disney. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a blatantly right. pretty bad, awful corporate entity that is just so beloved because it makes people think of when they were 
10. Well, at least they didn't ruin Star Wars. Yeah. So how much could the Switch sell in China? Some analysts say it could sell four to five million in the first year and then cap out around 10 million. Part of that is because some people in China who want a console already bought one through a gray market where foreign consoles are brought in. Reuters reporter Vincent Lee tweeted that there are many gamers in the country who already have one, of course, but easier to convince average consumers to pick one up when they don't have to go overseas or pay for international shipping. Analyst Daniel Ahmad of Nico Partners predicted that the Switch will overtake the PlayStation 4 as the most popular console in China by 2022. Woo! Ahmad wrote that, the hybrid nature of the Nintendo Switch is a key selling point of the console, and we believe the ability to play games at home and on the go will appeal to Chinese gamers who like to play mobile games both at home and in social environments. That paints a warm and fuzzy picture of what life must really be like over there in the People's Republic. It's all gaming. Yeah. You can game all day, every day. Yeah, Ahmad posted pictures of Switches and of course, a bunch of Mario merch for sale in China, right, Brian? Yeah, he was uh, posting a lot of stuff on opening day. There's no doubt that Nintendo is making a full court press to get into China. And like we said, consoles, they might not ever be as big in China as they are in the rest of the world, but even getting a small percentage of the Chinese market could mean a lot of sales. It's so huge. So that pie is so big. Everybody just wants their own little slice. Pull Chinese sales out of that pie. Mm -mm. Rip it out. <laughs> Blizzard made it somehow through the weekend. It was a rough one. All eyes were on them, but whoop. Even though there was a lot of drama heading into this weekend's BlizzCon, the developer made it clear that it was not backing down from its controversial punishment of a Hearthstone player. Yeah, interesting. So at the start of the convention, Blizzard president Jay Allen Brack, or Jab, <laughs> gave an emotional apology, or seemingly emotional.